Hi! So this is going to be the video that um, reviews the poster that we did in class for photosynthesis. Um, so I'm going to go through and highlight how the light dependent reactions are providing energy for the light independent reaction and how it all kind of comes together to form our main product of glucose. Um, some things to remember is for this class, we are really putting in more of an emphasis on the light dependent reactions. Um, just because light independent reaction slash Calvin cycle is pretty technical um, and you do need a pretty good knowledge of chemistry, um, which y'all haven't had yet as a course. So we are really, again, focusing on the light dependent and then just kind of major input output of the Calvin cycle. Okay, so looking at our poster, um, this entire thing is supposed to be the inside of a chloroplast. So this top phospholipid bilayer is supposed to represent, again, the outer membrane of the chloroplast. And then as we move inwards, these are like the internal structures. So we see that there are these thylakoids here. So these bottom membranes represent the thylakoids. We can tell that because this is where the chlorophyll can be found. Um, so I'm just going to label that. Um, so these are individual thylakoids, and so a stack of them would be called a granum thylakoids. There we go. Okay. And then um, that makes this outer section, which would just kind of be a fluid jelly-like um, consistency, would be the stroma, which we will see is where the light-independent reactions are occurring. Okay, so be able to identify the main internal structures. And now the other thing I want y'all to be able to do um, before we get started is to write the summary equation for photosynthesis um, towards the top of your poster. So our reactants that we are going to see that are used um, in the whole process are going to be 6H2O and 6CO2. Both of those um, will yield, so water we'll see will turn into 6O2. We'll talk about what happens to water. Uh, and carbon dioxide is what's going to lead to the production of glucose. The only thing we're missing here is sunlight is our catalyst, so we are going to put it over the air. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, so that's kind of like the setup and kind of just talking about what the poster's showing. So now we'll actually get into um, the processes of the light dependent reaction. So as the name suggests, we're gonna start with sunlight for this. Um, so we'll see the very first thing that's gonna happen is sunlight energy is going to get absorbed by the chlorophyll. And really what's happening and what gives chlorophyll the ability to utilize the sunlight energy is it has these electrons that are able to become excited. Um, and once they become excited, they're energized, they're able to um, hop out of the chlorophyll um, and kind of start a pathway through this network of proteins in this membrane. So these are all proteins. Okay, so sunlight energy keeps coming in, electrons are excited, they're energized, they are able to exit that chlorophyll. If this were to happen over and over again, we would see that the chlorophyll would run out of electrons eventually um, so we're actually going to start with water very early on because its role is going to be to donate and replenish electrons in the chlorophyll. Okay, so electrons are going to get donated from water to the chlorophyll. Okay, um, we'll see what happens then is what's left over is going to be O2. So I'm going to go ahead and write the balanced O2. Okay, this is, it would be one water per time. But I'm just going to draw the summary stuff. Um, so we have 6O2 as one of our products. And then the electrons are actually coming from the hydrogen part of water. So what's left over, we would write our H pluses or hydrogen ions. These are the equivalent to protons. Um, because if you look at hydrogen on the periodic table, it's atomic number one, meaning it's one proton and has one electron. Um, and the most common atomic mass is like 1.00 something. So it's also most commonly no neutrons. So really, after it gives up its electrons, all that's left over is a proton. Okay. Um, so we're going to have a ton of protons in this internal part called the lumen of the thylakoid. We'll see also there would be some in the stroma. We'll talk about that in a second. Okay. 
So, so far, again, light energy has struck the chlorophyll, which excites the electrons, energizes them to be able to leave, hop out, um, and water's role is simply to replace those ones that are leaving. Um, so once water replaces them, again, it splits. This is called photolysis. So the sunlight's actually doing this. It's not a spontaneous reaction, um, but the electrons go in. H plus is left over from those hydrogens um, and oxygen. We would see diffuses out of the chloroplast and goes into the air. I'm just gonna draw a little arrow. It's piecing out. So that's kind of steps one through three from your walkthrough. Um, so now we're going to kind of focus on these electrons again. So these electrons we would see, and there's an animation in our playlist that you can kind of see, again, how this is working. But they're getting passed between these proteins. And this protein is actually going to be a transport protein, specifically a proton pump. Um, so the electrons are energized. They're able to transfer energy to this um, proton pump which gives it the ability to do active transport. So if you remember, active transport is moving things from low to high concentration. Um, and again, it's proton pump. So it's actually going to be able to move protons into the thylakoid where there's a higher concentration. Okay, so that's gonna be the first major role of these electrons is giving um, the electron transport chain the ability to pump in protons to the thylakoid. Okay, so that is there. I'm trying to change my color real quick. Oops. Okay, so we have our H pluses. The electrons then are gonna end up back in this photosystem one. So that's just a bundle of chlorophyll. Um, we're gonna see they end up there and they kind of rest because they're losing energy every step of this way. Okay, um, these next two parts kind of happen simultaneously. Um, I go left to right while teaching this, but technically this step and then the final step can be switched. Um, but we'll see the electrons are resting in photosystem one until it's able to absorb enough sunlight to energize it. Um, and then these electrons, again, are gonna finish their little journey through these proteins. Ooh, that's a minus. And then they are going to end up um, being picked up by an electron carrier known as NADP plus. Um, so let me pick a color for that, let's do pink. NADP plus is gonna come by and it has the ability to pick up two electrons and actually it's gonna take one of these protons from the stroma, um, which will turn it into NADPH. So again, all that happened here is it picked up two electrons, that's a two, and a proton. Okay, so now we have NADPH. So those are the two major role of the, roles of the electrons. Again, they are helping um, provide energy to do active transport of those protons into the thylakoid, and they are adding on um, to NADP+, plus, turning it into NADPH alongside also one of those protons. Okay, so the last part of this light-dependent reaction um, is going to be involving these protons, H pluses, hydrogen ions. Um, so the reason why, going back to the first kind of stage of using those electrons, the reason why it was so important to actively transport these protons into the thylakoid against their concentration gradient um, is because these H pluses um, are going to lead to energy being able to be put towards the production of ATP. The way they're going to be able to do that is... Sorry, I'm trying to get my pen to work. There we go. The way they're going to be able to do this is these H pluses, remember, particles do not like being highly concentrated when they have the capability to evenly space out. That's why it takes energy to do active transport. Um, so these, if they have the ability to space out, they're going to naturally do that and go down the concentration gradient. And in this case, they do have that chance. Um, they have the ability to pass through ATP synthase. And I kind of describe ATP synthase as like a turbine. Um, the movement of these through the enzyme is going to allow it to have energy to reform that second phosphate bond between ADP and a third free phosphate. So here's ADP. Um, it would have a, again, 
third phosphate because ADP is diphosphate. Um, so again, the H plus is moving through ATP synthase. It's like a turbine. Um, it gives it energy to form ATP by reattaching the phosphate to ADP. Okay, so that's the whole purpose um, of, again, having those protons cycle through. Okay, so that's pretty much a light dependent reaction. So we kind of have talked about how the light dependent reaction its whole purpose is to take sunlight energy and convert it into chemical energy because then that energy is going to be used for the Calvin cycle slash light independent reaction. Um, so we are going to start with that now. Okay, so the Calvin cycle is going to happen in the stroma, so outside the thylakoids. And again, we are simplifying this just for the purpose of knowing the input and output and kind of just relatively what's happening. Um, just a little bit. So we're going to see that the reactant used in this step from our summary equation is carbon dioxide. Um, so 6CO2 would diffuse into the chloroplast. Um, and we would see there's a series of reactions of like reductions and regenerations um, that eventually lead to glucose, which is C6H12O6. Okay. Um, there is an enzyme, there's several enzymes, but we talked about the enzyme Rubisco, who is helping this process out. And again, we're starting with a one carbon molecule, and we're getting to six carbons in our final carbohydrate. Um, so it's kind of just helping link these together, and it's using the energy to do this from that ATP. So ATP's role, again, it's going to come from the light dependent reaction, come over here to the Calvin cycle, which I'll also label this Calvin cycle and it's going to be able to transfer its energy to kind of help start building this glucose, okay? Um, so once it transfers its energy, it re-becomes ADP again, and it will cycle back and kind of continue going back and forth as ADP, going to get recharged back again at the light dependent reaction, becoming ATP, going and dropping off and transferring its energy to the Calvin cycle, kind of back and forth, okay? Um, so again, we're linking together carbons to try to build a carbohydrate um, using energy from ATP and enzymes such as Rubisco. Um, and one thing you also might notice though, is we're starting with CO, just carbon and oxygen, but we're ending with a molecule of CHO. Um, so you might be wondering, where does the H come from? Um, the H is gonna come from our buddy NADPH. And I might have to shift this over because I'm running over. There you go. NADPH. So NADPH is going to kind of do the same thing. I refer to them as our energy uber. Um, so it comes over and it drops off its two electrons that it picked up from the electron transport chain and that proton. So it's dropping off this, um, these particles and re-becoming NADP+. So again, ATP and NADPH um, they're not listed in our summary equation because they don't leave the system. Their role is to go back to the light dependent reaction, get recharged, so become NADPH, ATP, go to the Calvin cycle, give their um, use. So like ATP gives the energy, NADPH gives the electrons and the proton. And then they go back and kind of repeat the process. Um, but yeah, so the Calvin cycle, again, the goal is to make glucose, the whole goal of photosynthesis. And the reason why we're able to make glucose here is because they're able to utilize the energy from the light dependent reaction. Um, and they're able to tend to take carbon dioxide and again link them together um, from enzymes and using that energy. Okay? So this is just an overall, um, again, summary, a little bit simplified for the purpose of this course. Um, but I hope going through this step by step is helpful. I also hope that you are going to practice and kind of be able to fully do this poster on your own um, and also be able to interpret steps if you were given a picture um, of a completed diagram like this. So yeah, I hope this helps. Um, I will see y'all later.